While the Modern Warfare franchise tends to play it safe, Treyarch was especially brave with its shepherding of the Call of Duty brand in the first Black Ops. Including its patented zombie mode along with the top-down shooter and other hidden goodies, it wasn't afraid to break the mold of the traditional modern military shooter. Now it's taking a step into the future with Black Ops 2. But is this journey into the unknown worthy of the Call of Duty name? There will be nothing anyone can do to stop it. I couldn't stop it. See that handsome bastard? That's me. The story behind Black Ops 2 is all about the power of revenge. Raul Menendez had a couple bad run-ins with Alex Mason and Frank Woods back in the 80s, and his thirst for retribution has turned him into the world's most dangerous man. Jump ahead to 2025, and Mason's son David visits Woods in a nursing home to try and piece together clues that will lead to the villain. He's trying to unleash a cyber weapon that will bring the world's technology infrastructure to its knees and wants to utilize the U.S.'s unmanned drone force to make it happen. The time-jumping prose is full of twists and betrayal that are only bolstered by the game's branching story paths. The politicians, they want you to think this is about ideology. It's a lot of horse shit. At certain points, you're asked to make some tough decisions, and these choices have huge consequences. Characters live or die, and other countries decide whether to lend a hand. Each decision comes with heavy ramifications that you will only realize later, and this unpredictability combined with an already arresting base story will keep you guessing until the end. There are many different endings, and you'll have to play it multiple times to see every possible story arc and conclusion. From this point on, today never happened. Let's smoke this bastard. A branching story dictates that the campaign structure is at least somewhat flexible, and this is accomplished via in-mission decision-making and the brand new Strike Force levels. At certain points, you're given a choice of which direction to go, and each path leads to a completely different scenario. The paths ultimately reconnect, but it adds some latitude and replayability. It's all good. Confirmed. Five different Strike Force levels pop up at different points throughout the single player. You can choose to ignore them and continue with the regular campaign if you wish, but each one only gives you so many campaign missions to complete before they disappear for good. If you fail, it's final. You only have so many Strike Force teams, and if you use them all up, you cannot attempt the mission again until you've built up more teams by completing regular campaign missions. Juggling these two types of objectives is integral to how the story plays out, because succeeding at Strike Force builds allies that come to your aid later on. When you're not playing Strike Force or traipsing down alternate paths, the level design stays true to the Black Ops formula. Tightly controlled corridor sections give way to massive open battlefields that give you some room to maneuver. In a series first, you're also able to choose your loadout before each mission, allowing you to build a relationship with your favorite armaments. Multiplayer is obviously what gives the Call of Duty franchise legs, and its design has undergone just as many changes as the campaign in Black Ops 2. The most obvious overhaul has come to create a class. Essentially, the entire system has been blown up in favor of what's called Pick 10. Hostiles have captured the hard point. You're no longer required to make one choice from each loadout category. You can stock up on perks and eliminate the sidearm altogether. You can build a massive arsenal and skimp on the perks. It's completely up to you. Everything comes with a point cost, and when you hit 10 points, you're done. Adding to the flexibility is the wild card, which allows you to choose multiple perks from the same grouping, install three attachments on a single gun, or carry multiple grenades and equipment. We've yet to find an overpowered loadout, and it's liberating to be able to build whatever kind of soldier you want. You're rewarded with points for just about everything you do, and they supply the currency for the new score streaks. Whether you're defending a point, grabbing the flag, or just dropping an enemy, your score will build, with each reward requiring a specific total. Far more interactive than those that came before, now you can explode a Hellstorm missile before it hits the ground to give it more coverage. And some, like the AGR, give you the choice of controlling it yourself and remaining vulnerable, or letting the computer handle it. Fly. New entries like the Dragonfire Drone, the Hunter Killer Drone, and the Lightning Strike all fit well within the framework, and there are even some new defensive streaks like the Slow-Mo Inducing Guardian. 
you also get a lot more feedback on how your streaks are doing via radio chatter. Friendly lightning strike inbound. You're handsomely rewarded for being a team player in Black Ops 2, and the new technology is fun and intuitive to use. Hostile UAV incoming. They dropped our flag. The changes and upgrades just continue to swell. Zombies is blown out to four separate modes, including the strategically fun transit option, where you jump from one location to the next at will, collecting parts and building items to aid in your struggle. Some semblance of a story would help here, but alternates like the team-based grief selection provide a different take at least. Combat training now ties into multiplayer XP up to level 10, and the new League feature lets you play five ranking matches to seed you against equal players in games where all the randoms like care packages are removed. Though we're not so sure that basing rankings on wins and losses instead of kill-death ratio is the right decision. I am an indisputable genius! Then there's the CODcasting feature to broadcast live matches, the entirety of Elite going free, and a buffed theater mode. Prestige has even been reworked to make it more enticing. If we have one criticism of the design, it's that new multiplayer modes are rare. Save for multi-team deathmatch and a King of the Hill variant with roaming territories called Hardpoint, you get the usual suspects. Have a teammate bleeding out. Black Ops 2's campaign really stretches the limits of the first-person shooter label. Sure, there's plenty of combat, but you spend almost as much time doing other things. And while riding horses is a nice novelty, the game uses these new gameplay elements in clever, relevant ways. You simply never know what you're going to be doing next, yet it never leans on cliches like long turret shootouts. Quick-time events are extremely rare, but when they appear, they make sense within the context of what you're being asked to do. So far, so good. The game truly runs the gamut and tends to give you just the right amount of control to keep it from seeming frivolous or frustrating. Whether you're flying a hover jet through downtown Los Angeles, careening toward the ground in a jet suit, taking control of future tech like drones and walkers, or trying to survive as a flood ravages the battleground, almost all of it is exhilarating and interesting. Oh shit, that was a close one, huh? The gunplay settles into more of a groove, but it's made fresh by the future technology. The generous auto-aim returns, along with the alternate fire modes for many weapons. Just fiddling around with some of the wishful thinking can be fun, and there are parts of the game that give off a heavy Perfect Dark vibe. Even the sections taking place in the 80s give you some fun toys to tinker with. You'll still find yourself working through the obligatory sniping, stealth, and escort missions, but they almost always have a twist. Hold! Take cover behind that lock. The Strike Force missions feature their own discreet gameplay style, and the tutorial throws a little too much at you before tossing you to the wolves. You can jump from General's view down to control any soldier, turret, or drone in the blink of an eye, but the selection interface is a little touchy. The computer AI leaves something to be desired, so you're gonna have to get your hands dirty if you want to complete them. Despite these quirks, we found ourselves wanting to play them over again just to perfect our strategies. And like the rest of the campaign, it does a great job of preparing you for multiplayer shenanigans. I confirm, fresh troops on deck. Engaging enemy quads. When you do suit up for online play, be prepared. With tons of sight lines, the 14 maps provide few places to hide. Generally, if you stop, you die. It drastically cuts down on camping, but it also ensures you're going to get shot by a lot of unseen enemies. While it's something that is continually tweaked, spawning has its ups and downs, and overall, the multiplayer experience feels like it's catered to those with short attention spans. Joining games is quick and hassle-free, and you rarely take 20 paces after spawning before you're engaged. Be advised, hostile RCXD spotted. Be tougher than we thought. If you look very closely, you can see some minute technical tiptoes forward, but the graphics engine is definitely beginning to look a little ragged. Textures can appear blurry, shadows are still a sore spot, and while their facial animation manages to convey a lot, humans are still not its strong suit. Yet, it rarely uses pre-rendered cinemas as a crutch, despite the tremendous set pieces that unfold one after another. It pays off in small touches like characters being permanently altered, depending on your performance, in key scenarios. It's just another way the game ditches its rigid structure of the past for more malleability. The paint may be drawing out, but it's hard to fault the artist. Roger that, Salazar! Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails has composed a few songs for the soundtrack, but the majority of the music infuses the typical military fare with some synths to give it a futuristic bent. The sound design is tight and punchy with special accommodation for the near-future weapons, and the voice actors deliver strong performances all around. Section, you seen this? Yeah. Be ready to move on my kill. An EMP grenade will fry their cloaking systems. 
Oh yeah! Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is the most evolved sequel we've played in recent memory, as it challenges the status quo at almost every turn. The Elastic Story provides plenty of incentive to replay the campaign, the Strike Force levels aren't executed perfectly, but they're a glimpse at the future, and the multiplayer features are tweaked to make every playstyle relevant and to level the playing field. It does so many new things so very well, making it the most groundbreaking Call of Duty since the first Modern Warfare. Shooters simply don't get much more deep, varied, surprising, or rewarding than this. Safety's on, dipshit.